All right, let's try this. IDS 302. Welcome to module one, video two. I did not think I'd be doing a video from this angle when I put on camouflage Levi's this morning. Uh, so my apologies, but you know, I don't think they should offend anyone. <laughs> uh, I tried something new here. I never like to do my videos like inside at a desk. It's kind of boring. Uh, my room rating would be low. Uh, but I haven't done one from this distance, but there's, uh, that's the house. And there's a, like a candle holder thing and my iPad fits right in it. And it's got a nice little angle. So I thought, well, this is, this is fine. Let's try this. Uh, it's much wider than I thought. But then again, you don't need to see me in close ups anyways. So let's give it a shot here. Um, I can't really see a lot because the actual candle holder is right in the way, but I hope you're seeing me and hearing me. Okay. Let's take, um, uh, Talk about a variety of things right off the bat. Um, quiz questions. Uh, I really hadn't checked today how everybody was doing on the quizzes, but um, uh, I will say that uh, make sure you kind of get clear on the ones you might have gotten wrong, okay? I think the quiz is due tonight, I guess, because um, only a handful of students have taken it with varying degrees of success. Uh, so, okay, there, I'm not going to say any more about it, except uh, when you do your quiz, review the ones you got wrong. If you have any questions on anything or want to, you know, discuss why an answer was such and such, then just let me know, okay? Um, by the way, I'm still in a uh, far western suburb of Milwaukee called Oconomowoc. If you can pronounce that, then you're familiar with the area. I'm near Lake Okachi Lake. And this is just a small lake behind me, staying with friends. Um, you know, not that I'm trying to like said, gain sympathy. My mom passed away on Sunday. I was uh, I was there with my, I'm the oldest of six. My The four oldest siblings were there in her condo. Um, don't not get any more depressing details than that. She was 85. And if I could sign the contract to get to 85, I'd do it right now. So it was, uh, you know, grief and celebration. And uh, next week, I'll be at a funeral on Wednesday, a burial on Thursday. And then I'm going to load up a U-Haul trailer on Friday and take off back to Phoenix on Saturday. Just so you know, so my schedule is a little hectic right now. I might be doing videos from rest areas on the way back, uh, which I've done before. So it's not a big deal. Um and i uh, going to head back from the frying pan into the fire in terms of COVID. Uh, but I feel like I'll have better control over my own sanctuary when I get back than beautiful giant house. But, uh, you know, there's, there's weak links, I guess. Um, okay. So remember that your video points, they're good. Just, I mean, send me the, whenever you watch the videos, send me the, uh, the Easter eggs. You get five points. Don't worry about due dates on these. I hope this iPad doesn't blow off. It's a little windy out here. Um, okay, now a tip. Right now I'm in Central Time, uh, and I go to bed early. Okay, so I go to bed really early in Phoenix, but here I was going to bed uh, in Phoenix. I was going to bed at seven o'clock because there's nothing to do and get up early at four and go walking. Um, here I've been going to bed about between nine and ten at the latest. Okay, so if you're emailing me at seven o'clock from Phoenix, that's nine o'clock here. I'm not going to answer it. Don't do that on the due dates give yourself a little heads up on that i try to answer as quick as i can but remember we're all in different time zones and we're all going to go by the arizona time zone uh okay so i got a few things to say about step, time to step up your game and have discipline for these disciplinary issues we're dealing with this is really important stuff and i'm telling you this straight up above board no surprises okay if you don't capitalize the disciplines i'm going to ding you I've been saying it. It was an Easter egg. It'll probably be another Easter egg. Capitalize the discipline. Okay. Bring your receipts. Show me that they're proper nouns or it didn't happen. I don't know. I'm making weird analogies, but capitalize your disciplines. You have to. Okay. It's, it's a requirement. Boy, I'm getting washed. Look at the sun changing on. Uh, so that's really important. Capitalize your disciplines. Okay. You don't capitalize them. I'm not going to say I'm saying they're not disciplines. OK, I really just drawn that line so it's clear for everybody. OK, uh, just so you know. Um, all right. 
Uh, no line gaps between paragraphs. Indent your paragraphs. I know this is basic stuff. It's almost high school English and grammar, but I'm reminding people because we tend to stray from being disciplined when it comes to formal writing. Okay, this is formal scholarly writing. There's going to be some new rules to follow that you you know about kind of, but you just may have not had to implement them. Paragraph indents. Just hit your tab button, right? Every time the same. Don't try to measure. Well, let's say up to seven spaces, seven spaces. No, just tab it in. Should be using Word, okay? But don't give me line gaps between paragraphs then. But definitely give me paragraphs. Because you can only imagine what it's like to read one long droning on and on and on and on paragraph without an indent. Give the reader a break. We want to take a breath, okay? Thank you. So no line gaps between paragraphs. Indent your paragraphs, okay? The font. I didn't ding anybody on the the pick uh, the, the research topic assignment or to pick one, but you need to use Times New Roman 12-point font. I saw way too much Calibri 12, which is probably the default on your Word. Check it out. But you want to use Times New Roman 12, double line spacing. I will ding for that. I mean, you know, you can hate me, but really, it's easy, right? It's easy. It's very easy. Trust me, it's easy. So come on over to our side and format, okay? All right. Um, you put your, you got to put your name on a paper, okay? I got a lot of blank papers uh, last week. I know it comes in a format that I can see whose it is, but if I download it and move it over to a file so I can comment on it or something, I don't got a name. I need your name on the paper. I don't need a cover page, but I need a name, okay? Thank you very much for the name. All right. Um, hopefully, you can see the links and the downloads um, on everything. And if you cannot see anything from the samples to anything that I'm linking, let me know. All right. On the pick one assignment, um, I was confused because I was seeing all these like four papers written on racism, AI statement on racism. I totally blew it because I thought it was ASU on racism. I was like, that's the wrong link. I know what you were seeing. You went to the Association of Interdisciplinary Studies. They probably had a letter at the front page. I know they did. In fact, like a lot of organizations are talking about um, racism and Black Lives Matter issues and things like that. So you guys saw that and wrote on it, fine. I, I saw that, I got back and changed it, hopefully before anyone uh, had their feathers ruffled because I would understand completely, all right? So I fixed that. The pick ones were really good. Every, every choice was used. I like to see that. I'm hoping you were able to review those before you chose one. That's kind of my sneaky way of getting you to review more, more work and then choosing one of them to write about, okay? Uh, you see what I did there? Uh, okay. And uh, let's see. The pick ones were really good. Like I said, your uh, let's go. Let's get let's let's do Easter egg number one first. Okay. I'm gonna go with capitalize the disciplines. Okay. Capitalize the disciplines. I think it's more important than the one I had here for Easter egg one. I you know obviously I want I want to emphasize that. Okay. Let's talk about the research topic and go on from there. The research topics that came through overwhelmingly were fine, okay? I had a few issues with some of them. Again, remember, I dinged you if you didn't capitalize your disciplines, and I probably said there were no di disciplines identified. And that may be snarky or whatever, but if you don't capitalize it, it's not a discipline. It's just a word about business or chemistry or biology, okay? Um, so let me, uh, let me try to get started. Okay, we needed to do a doable topic, okay? I purposely listed fairly broad, well, broad topics, um, and many of you caught that they were broad, and I appreciate that. I wanted to just start funneling you into a topic. You know what I mean? I can't, I don't really start at the, at the micro level. We got to kind of start at a macro level where you have, a, have an idea about what the topic is going to be, right? So let's just say it's um, sustainability, okay? It's a big topic, all right? And I put it in there as a list. Now, if you chose sustainability, at that point, let's go to the next level. I'm letting you say, okay, what are your concentrations or what concentrations do you want to use to start researching sustainability in an inter integrative, interdisciplinary way? So in that case, you might say, well, sustainability, I have, um, you know, economics and um, uh, business. Let's just say the general ones, you know. Uh, so then that may lead you into wanting to study sustainability from a business and economic standpoint and integrate those ideas and to then delve into the workplace, okay? Because remember, first you're gonna be gathering 
previous data and previous research that's been done before you in your same area that you're researching, then you're going to get your own original data, which is, like I say, a key requirement to uh, having a university level research, even at a crawling stage, what differentiates it from writing a report or doing uh, researching a trip or a new car like we do on our real spare time is to bring in original data. Yes, this is a very simplified way to do it, but it illustrates for me to you that there has to be some kind of original data. If not, then you're going to take the data that exists already, discover something new out of that. I don't, I don't expect undergrad students to be able to do that. I don't expect a lot of students to do that. I don't expect me to do that. Okay. Um, so instead of that, instead of discovering something new out of existing data that no one spotted before, we're going to take and get our own new data by a random a survey of random adults, okay, a quantitative survey, which means that everybody has the same choice of answers. I'm doing this with very defined parameters because we don't have the time, especially in six weeks or seven weeks or 15 weeks, to do a qualitative study that is worth its salt, where you would have a chance to measure the quality of the answer and code it and do a meaning field and a validity horizon. Just so you know, those things I just said, you're gonna be required to do if you decide to do your survey and have a have one or more boxed open questions. You're just you're just putting yourself into a mixed methods or qualitative survey research, which means you're gonna be required to do a validity horizon, a meaning field, and a coding system. If you don't want to get into those things, please do a quantitative survey. We'll get into that in a week or so. Okay. But I'm just letting you know. All right. So we've got this doable topic of the broad topic. We're bringing it down to your concentrations or whatever concentrations and slash disciplines. I use those two words interchangeably. Whatever you want to do, that'll direct you more further into this way. And then you're going to think about your survey of random adults. So let's talk, let's think about that if we're business economics. But we know that we're going to survey random adults for our data. Then what are we going to, what can we talk about? Maybe, maybe sustainability in the workplace then, right? I mean, people have jobs, may not be going into them because it's COVID. So let's just say now it's their businesses at home and what are the sustainability habits that they have at their business or that they would like to see? What are their opinions, perceptions, and experiences? It doesn't have to be at the moment. It could be before the COVID pandemic and such. Okay. So remember that everybody's going to have that same main question to define what this survey is. What are some of the opinions, perceptions, and experiences regarding blank, you fill in the blank, comma, revealed in a survey of random adults, question mark. Notice what I'm doing there. I'm defining that real closely, saying what are opinions, perceptions, experiences. Okay, those are pretty kind of, you know, ambiguous, but they get to the point. Regarding blank, that's your topic, okay? Um, it could be sustainability in the workplace in this case. You could, you, could, you could take that broad title and narrow it down. Then I'm saying, I'm not ending it there. I'm saying comma, revealed in a survey. Okay, so now the reader, whoever is reviewing this, knows that your uh, methodology, your design is going to be a survey, but it's not just revealed in a survey of sustainability experts, revealed in a survey of CEOs, it's revealed in a survey of random adults. So I'm actually defining the demographic that we're going to go after there as the question. So now you've got, you know, you've got what you're shooting for, opinions, perceptions, experiences, you got your topic regarding what, you got revealed in a survey. So you got your design of random adults. You have your demographic. Okay. Now remember, this is crawling research. So in under other cases, you could be surveying women under 30 or uh, open-ended qualitative questions to CEOs over 50. I, I mean, you know, obviously it's in, there's an infinite number of ways to go. We're doing this here because of our time, because of undergrad students, we don't want to, we're going to do crawling research. And because everybody's interdisciplinary, it comes from a different background. So we're trying to tailor this so that you've got room to work in areas that you're interested in, but you're also not going to be overwhelmed in a short course with concepts and requirements of research that are meant for higher levels. Okay. So um, that's where we kind of balance those. All right. So, um, uh, you know, you're going to narrow that down like I just showed you. And then you know, in the steps, you're going to be looking at peer reviewed research that came before you. You're going to, and inevitably, someone's going to say, I can't find anything on this topic anywhere. You know, nobody's done anything. I'm going to help you guys do that. I'm going to get through that. And that's fine. You know, if that's what it comes to. But if there's something out there, 
There's not anything you can think of that you're not going to find anything on. I can almost guarantee it. Isn't that, you know, uh, it's, it's a pretty easy statement to make nowadays. Okay, so you'll find that. Um, all right, remember the ethics in the IRB, the Institutional Review Board. So we can't do research at this level without approval on any sensitive topic or sensitive, dem vulnerable demographic or anything. So we can't get into like a lot of police issues that you're not gonna get any information on. You're just not, okay? Or domestic violence or underage things. So we stay away from that in this class, okay? Higher levels of research, have at it. This is where that stuff comes from. But you gotta learn how to crawl before you can walk, run, sprint, right? Have at it. I hope some people take on research in a lot deeper capacity and they remember some of the foundational things they learned in this course. But absolutely, you could get approval from the Institutional Review Board on certain things that you can't really do here because it only meets every six weeks. And this course is six weeks, so do the math, right? All right, so let's let's that's it on that. Let's go to Easter egg number two. Easter egg number two is capitalize the disciplines. That's right, I said it again. Easter egg number two is capitalize the disciplines. If you're not catching that emphasis there, then I'm sorry. <laughs> but okay. Um, Let's talk about step one. I want to make sure that you look at the sample. All right. That's going to tell you more than I could. Okay. There's certain things you're going to put in that, that, that step one that are fairly self-explanatory. And I want to drive this. I don't want to drive this uh, video too long, but you have the statement of the problem. See how it was written there. Purpose of the study, significance of the study. Okay. So because step one is define a complex issue or problem. Be specific, provide background information concerning the issue problem. If you go shallow on me, you're going to get graded shallow. If you go brief on me, you get graded brief. If you get some depth in there, you're going to be graded well. The paper that you're going to see in here is a sample, got 100 points, just so you know, okay? Now, be careful. Citations. You need to do a works cited list in an appropriate way. It starts on the top of the first blank page after the writing's done. It doesn't start a couple lines underneath. Remember that. If you don't, you're going to get dinged. I, it's just APA format. It's not winging it. Again, no abstract, no cover page on this. You don't need it. You're just doing step one. Look at the sample and follow that and put your content in there, okay? Um, you don't have to do a – again, I use this. I put a sample of a final paper in here just so you can see what it's going to look like as we go through. But you can see how she did this. She's got her name, IDS302, Tanner Integrated Model Step 1. Now she's got to find your approved complex topic. Okay, um, that's fine. But look at, it's thorough, okay? It's two pages, which even then is a little brief, but it's only step one. Um, and it has reference list, could be works cited, hanging paragraphs, alphabetized, okay? And the sources are fairly good here, okay? I'm not a big fan that, you know, she really couldn't get into it. She used NASA, she used a few dot orgs. She used the New York Times. Um, it's a tough one. I mean, she's doing it on uh, climate change here. Um, I recommend you use the library. You're not going to get through this paper without using a library and finding peer reviewed sources. You can do that by going to the ASD library website. You put a search in there, okay? On the right side, you filter it. You filter it for on, full text online available and you filter it for peer-reviewed, and boom, everything that comes up will be good for this, because peer-reviewed are important. I don't want to see any dictionary. I don't want to see anything ending in pedia, whether that's investopedia, uh, Wikipedia, uh, encyclopedia, no pedias, no dictionary, no Forbes, no cron.com. I, I only want to see New York Times if it's just one of like six. <laughs> Uh, we need to stay away from those things. Why? What does .com stand for? It stands for commercial. What is commercial? Revenue producing. What does revenue producing mean? Has an inherent bias. Has advertised. You show me a site. Is it no blogs. Okay. I don't want any links in the paper. Links should be down in the works cited list where it, where you if you can look on APA formatting and Purdue all you'll see how to cite those. The links are not in there. Your in text citations. They need to come before the punctuation. They do not come after the punctuation. You know, the parentheses, in-text citation, it's before the final punctuation. If you put it after, that means you're starting the next sentence with the citation, and I will ding you for that, okay? I know it's just a pain, and people hate my guts for that, but 
but that's what it is. It's APA formatting. I mean, come on, work with me, will you? Um, in the in the parentheses, you've got last name, comma, year, comma, or you have last name, comma, year, comma, page number, period, comma. Okay. Look at APA formatting on Purdue OWL to see how those examples are set up. You will see everything you need to learn there. I can't stress that enough. I didn't know squat on how to do this until I was 53 or 54 years old. Okay. So I had a whole lifetime of bad habits to ring out. And that's how I learned it. Okay. All right. I didn't have anybody take me step by step. And I didn't have to like not worry about it. It's important. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. But I'm telling you all the tools are here. All right. So these papers are samples aren't perfect, but they're really good. And I think they 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 got the score that they deserve. Okay. Um, and I think they look fine. Okay, so that's step one. And then the overall paper, if you still want to get an idea of what we're building to now for the next four weeks, that's what you're looking at. Okay, so you're going to start building it with this paper, step one. All right, here's a very big important point that I'm going to stress. In scholarly academic writing, there is no I, me, my written down there. No pronouns like that. This is my rough, this is my tough love of saying, nobody cares, okay? I like saying that. Why, why can't you say I, me, my, because nobody cares? Think about you're in high school or any other time that, you know, again, I know we have a lot of mature students in my class. Think about books you read, texts you read, anything like that. Even documenting films, I guess, even though I don't want to get films involved here, but, but you rarely, rarely, rarely will see, you know, in a history book. Um, this book is about the American Civil War. I wanted to write about the Civil War because I think it's important that students learn about Civil War and I want to find a way that I could teach them. You don't see that in textbooks. They just get into it and they write third person. Keep yourself out of it. Keep yourself out of it. Research at any level like this is not done for the personal fulfillment of the researcher. That's not what it's done for. Okay? Because we already know if a researcher is in a field of human rights, they're already interested in human rights. They don't need to say, I'm interested in human rights. I'm, already, I'm in human rights. I'm in the field. You're on the inside now, right? You are, well, if that iPad falls, it's going to shatter a million pieces. Um, you're on the inside of your field now. You don't look at it from the outside like you can't get in the game. You're in the game. Act like you're in the game. Be the product at the end of what you're looking for. Be the researcher in, in, in sustainability. Be the researcher in domestic terrorism. Be the researcher. Don't be somebody on the outside trying to gather stuff that the experts did. You're part of this now, okay? Embrace that part of your identity now, okay? As a scholar. And don't write like you're, you know, in 10th grade. And I like ice cream. I like, tea. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, because you keep yourself out. Because I already know you do. I already know you like, I know you like it. I already know you want to learn more about it. I already know. I already know, okay? I already know you want to breathe today, in and out. So you don't have to put that in there, right? I already know you want to eat. I already know if you're sustainability and business that you want to write about sustainability and research it. So that's how we move forward and, and we take ourselves out of it. Research is a very humbling activity, a lot of humility. Researchers do their research because they want to build their field. Okay, yes, there's people like, it's the only, it's ego and everybody's similar in ways that, boy, I can get recognized Nobel Prize. Sure, I understand. I concede that. But they do it to advance their field, okay? Yes, it's inherently they want to learn more for themselves, but it's not a selfish endeavor. Research is for the field, okay? It's already inherent that that that, that I want to know more about this because it's what I do, okay? It's what my I, I, my passion. So get past that passion, acknowledge it, and then move into the area where you can do something with it now, right? I hope you get that, and I hope I'm not being too harsh about that, you know? I don't want to slow your roll or harsh your buzz. <laughs> Anyhow, I have no idea how long I've gone. I can't see it from here. Um, I wanted to get into selling yourself as an IDS, interdisciplinarian, integrative learner. I'm going to pass on that for now because I, I know you guys got to get going. I do too. Um, and I'm going to keep making notes about, you know, talking about this as we go along about what do you do with this when you have it? You know, how, how do you look at it and how, how, how can you take advantage of it? How can you, um, you know, be judged in a, at, a, at a, maybe a higher level than, than somebody else who's a disciplinarian? 
you should be picking some of that up through the readings anyways, right? Um, you know, I do want to remind everybody to contact me with questions, okay? Try to get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said, I'm going to have a busy week. Ah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week, and Saturday and Sunday, whatever, before I get back to Phoenix on Monday of the following week. Um, oh, joy, 118 degrees. But just keep getting back to me if you can. Um, I'll probably, I'm going to do video number, I'm going to do the video, module two video on sun, Sunday, right? Today's Friday already? I'll do that Sunday. It starts Monday, of course. I, I'm going to push them ahead a little bit, I think. I, I don't know yet. I, I'm just half checked out, you know. All right, you guys and gals, thank you so much. Let's do Easter egg number three. Uh, and this is important, too. I can only do it once, not like the other two Easter eggs, but I'm going to say it's really important. No, I, me, my. Okay. All right. No, I, me, my. All right. What you become in this research paper, if you want to talk about yourself in any way, you could use the current researcher. It still keeps you at arms like the current researcher. Don't start using the royal we, like we think this or whatever, because you're not a team of researchers, just one research, so let's just take, take it down. Don't be overly ambitious. Take it down. Take it down. You're not going to be, you're not going to sit here. I mean, if somebody wants to cure cancer, I'll nominate them for a Nobel Prize and give you an A. It's not going to happen. Take it down. Okay, there's no point in research to over-promising and then under-delivering. Do not watch your biases. Very important. Watch your biases. Don't go into this thing with a chip on your shoulder, okay? Have your chip inside if you want to have it, okay? I can see plenty of controversial, provocative research program projects that I might agree with, okay? Likely or not, I don't know. But you can't start from that standpoint. You have to let the data speak to you. You don't seek out your opinion in, in, um, in opinion-based research, okay? You can look at trends. What you're trying to do is you're not trying to prove anything, by the way. You're looking at trends. You're looking at certain evidence. But you're not going to prove anything, okay? So don't use the word prove. You're not going to prove anything. And that's okay. No research proves anything. Research just affirms previous research, affirms certain theories or hypotheses, and then it moves forward because it could always be rejected at some point. Just think about how science, what we've not, what we've learned about human beings and science over the you know, over a millennia, uh, how that's changed. You know, did they prove the world was flat? Did they prove we were the center of the solar system or the universe? I mean, you know, what are we, pro we're not proving, we're just continuing to modify and learning more, right? Okay, I've gone way long here. Um, have a great weekend, I guess. I'll say forks up, peace. I gotta get up and walk all the way over there? Oh my God. Maybe I can pass. All right, all right. Have a good one. See ya.